What's up, Frenchie fam? It's Tony here and Little Tortellino. <sighs> had a nose job about two months ago. And as you can see, it made a pretty big difference in his nose. So this video is going to be all about the nares and soft palate surgery that a lot of French Bulldog owners are questioning whether or not they should have for their dogs. And we actually tried to put off the surgery for as long as we could because we wanted to make sure that Tortellino was full grown before we did anything that might be life changing like this. Um, we also wanted to get it done at the same time that we got him fixed so that he'd only have to be under once. Now I know a lot of you are probably watching this video and you have concerns. Uh, likewise, I also wasn't sure if this was the right surgery for him. Our breeder who we got him from said bulldogs are not supposed to breathe well, they're supposed to struggle to breathe, that's just part of the breed. And I kind of was okay with that for a while. He was a puppy, he didn't really have a lot of problems breathing, and then as he got older, it sort of started to get worse. He'd kind of go running around the yard, or we'd take him for a walk, you know, just a couple blocks even, and he'd be out of breath by the time we got back. It was apparent to me that he was having a very hard time breathing, this was not normal, this wasn't a good thing. So I went to the internet and I went to a bunch of forums, Fab Frenchie forums on Facebook, um, and, and I looked up a lot of information about other owners who had had the surgery and what complications their dogs had had. Very quickly, it became apparent to me that the problem was that he can't breathe and that bulldogs should be able to breathe better and the fact that they can't breathe better is not their fault, but actually our fault uh, as humans. We've bred them this way. And the American Kennel Society also uh, is responsible here because in their breed standard, they like to have them have the shortest nose possible. It creates really unhealthy dogs. They have all these problems breathing. A lot of them don't live past four, five, or six years old because they have all these complications from breathing. And this surgery, the soft palate and nary surgery, is one of the few things that we can do to give our French Bulldogs a longer, more comfortable life. Now, that being said, we didn't just run to the first vet that we got recommended to and have the surgery. We actually went to two different vets and we spoke to four vets in total. The first vet that we ever took him to recommended the surgery from the beginning, which kind of worked against us in the long term because his uh, health insurance wouldn't cover it. Good news, a lot of vets do take care credit, which is uh, a credit card that'll let you do 0% financing up to 24 months on surgeries. And I don't get any money from this. I'm only recommending them because we use them and it was a great service and it's allowed us to do the surgery in a way that wasn't a huge financial burden to us like I thought it was going to be. Um, but there are other ways that you can make this work too. Now, we happen to live in Southern California, which is maybe one of the most expensive parts of the country and prices for doggy surgery go along with that as well. The first vet that we went to was about 15 minutes from our place. We went and talked to them and great surgeon, very nice, seemed like she knew what she was doing, but we got the quote and the quote to have his nares, soft palate, and his boys cut was up to $4,600. Dollars, And we were just stunned. We, we asked a bunch of people how much they paid for it, and we had never heard of anyone paying that much for it. I mean, that's new French bulldog money. And so we just, we put it off for a while. We said, I, I don't know if we can really justify spending that much. It doesn't seem like anyone else is. And is it really that much better than any other vet? And so we, we waited about another six months. We found another vet that we went to. Um, it was a little bit farther, about 35 minutes from where we lived. When we walked in, we just had a different feeling immediately from this vet. It's a family-owned clinic. When we walked in, there were three other French Bulldogs there already. This was a, a much smaller clinic that didn't have a lot of um, sort of corporation branding on it. The, other, the first place we went to was um, a much larger vet chain. And again, I have no doubt that they have great surgeons and everything, but just the cost and everything, it rubbed us the wrong way. And when we came to this vet, the doctor that we met with, she just came in full of confidence, knew exactly what she was talking about, what she was doing. She knew so much about bulldogs that we didn't know about problems with their skin, exactly what makes problems with their health. Um, and she'd been doing the surgery for decades. So we felt like this doctor kind of had won us over already just in terms of her knowledge and uh, domain knowledge specifically on Bulldogs alone. 
The quote that we got blew our minds how much less it was in the first place. The first place wanted $4,600. This pet clinic wanted $1,900. I mean, it's less than half. And you'll read online a lot of things about that you can do it with a scalpel, which is sort of the oldest and a lot of people consider sort of like barbaric kind of way of doing surgery. But we'll get back to that in a second. The second way is to do it with a scalpel that uses some kind of uh, radiation technology where it's vibrating very fast and something uh, like ultrasonic something. It's a more advanced version of the scalpel. The third way, which I thought was the safest and most effective, was to use a laser. I just assumed a laser is so specific and pinpoint accurate that it must be the better way. Oh, and it cauterizes as it cleaves away. It must be the safest way and best way to do it. Turns out I was wrong. <laughs> it turns out that what's so great about the scalpel is that because it is so razor sharp, it's actually the cleanest way to make the incision and to remove the nares. And it's also the fastest for recovery. Versus the laser, because it cauterizes as it goes, it can actually lengthen the recovery time. So I didn't know that at the time, but uh, the doctor I went to, she explained that to me. And she explained that they actually use the ultrasonic scalpel for the soft palate. I'm not exactly sure why that is. And so we said, all right, you know, this woman sounds like she really knows what she's doing. She's been doing this for decades. And there's so many French bulldogs here. And the icing on the cake was that she said, I can actually show you before and after pictures of the bulldogs that I've worked on. The other vet did not have pictures for us to see, and we did ask. They said, sorry, we don't really keep that kind of stuff. <laughs> this doctor, she was so proud of her work that she actually puts before and after pictures on Facebook. And actually, you can take a look at this before and after of Tortellino. You can see that the, the difference is just, it's there. The evidence is clear. Like, he can breathe so much better serendipitous too is that as we walked out she actually said hey this french bulldog over here i just did surgery on him last month and we saw his nose and we were like oh my god he just it looks great you wouldn't know that he even had surgery from that point on we thought these are the people we want to do surgery with i don't normally do this kind of thing and i do not make any money from this recommendation just i know that trying to find a vet to do the surgery and feeling confident in that decision was so emotionally draining for me and just worrisome and just one of the most uncomfortable decisions I've ever had to make. And I'm so happy with the care and the uh, service that uh, this vet was able to make. So if you're curious about who we went to, there's a link down below in, this, in the description. Again, I make no money from this. Um, I just think it's really great that there's a pet clinic that cares so much about doing this at a reasonable rate and making it available to people who otherwise couldn't afford it that I want to make sure that they get recognition for that. He just farted. It's going to stink in here in a second. Thank you, Dr. Daphner. Tortellino is so much happier since the surgery. Now, let's talk about the surgery itself. So two months ago in August, we had an appointment to bring him in. We made the appointment about two weeks out. We had to bring him in about 7.30 in the morning. So I took the day off from work. I was working from home. I brought him in at 7.30, bright and early. And they said, all right, we'll give you a call when he's out of surgery. It should probably be no later than 12. You can come pick him up today. That's actually something else that was important to us too. The first vet that we went to, they wanted to keep him overnight. And we actually had a couple other vets say the same thing, that they recommend overnight stay. There can be complications with the surgery and the recovery, and we need to wake them up slowly. I'm very hesitant to say this, but I do kind of feel like they may have been trying to get extra money from owners who are not aware that the dog can recover at home. Now, again, I might be wrong about that. I am not a doctor. Please take what I say with a grain of salt. But for us, we know that our dog is very anxious when he's away from us for too long. And taking him to an unfamiliar place, a vet, having surgery on him and having anesthesia, which is a very weird and uncomfortable experience, we just didn't want him to be spending a lot of time in a foreign place because I just I don't think it would have helped his recovery. I think what helps recovery is for him to be around us, to be in a familiar place that's comfortable, where he can recover knowing that he's safe. That was one of the best parts of going to this vet as well. So they insisted that he comes home the same day because they don't offer overnight care and they felt it wasn't necessary. And I'm sitting there, I'm not going to lie, for the three hours, it was very hard for me to think about anything except, is my dog okay? And I got a call around nine o'clock. They said, hey, he's about to go into surgery, um, but before we do his neutering, he has a skin infection. We have to give him antibiotics for it. Um, and he had actually been itching for weeks before. We thought he had really bad allergies. Turns out he had an infection. So they gave him the antibiotics and he said, all right, we'll call you back when he's done. About an hour and a half goes by and they go, hey, 
Tortellino's awake, he's very drowsy, but the surgery went really well, and he is recovering, and he's doing great. You can come pick him up at 12 o'clock. And I just thought, wow, that's incredible. I thought I wasn't going to be able to pick him up till the end of the day. I thought that, you know, oh no, what if they call me and tell me something bad happened? But no, the surgery went really well. When I got there, they told me that your dog, unfortunately, has some of the tightest, uh, has some of the tightest nares we've ever seen, and his throat is actually so tight from how big it is that we had to use an intubator, the thing that lets them breathe while they're under. We had to use the intubator for a 10-pound cat. Tortellino's a 32-pound French bulldog. That was a good sign for me that this was the right decision to make getting him the surgery because it turns out that not only was he having a hard time breathing with the soft palate and the tight nares, but he was still gonna have a hard time breathing after. So the fact that we could reduce that, even if we only got like 30%, 40% better breathing back, I will take it because the difference has been night and day. He can play for so much longer. He enjoys going to play at the dog park. He enjoys going for walks. He's a different dog. It's really amazing how much more energy he has, how much happier he is, and how much quieter he is. Now, I don't know if you can really tell the difference, but in my last video, his noise was very loud and just a constant sound in the background. Now, I'm sure you can hear him here as well, but at night when we sleep, he used to shake the entire room with his breathing. That's how loud it was. Now, he still snores, but it's nowhere near as loud anymore. It's, it's definitely just a cute little snore at this point. It's like other dogs that my family had over the years. It's an acceptable level of snoring, and he sleeps so much better too. It's really nice. His recovery was great. Um, for the first week, you know, they actually said we didn't really need to feed him soft food because of the method that they used. He should be able to eat kibble right away, but just to be safe, we gave him uh, wet food for the first three, four days, and we switched him back to kibble. He did great. Um, it was about two, three days before he really wanted to kind of start playing a little bit again. We didn't really let him play for a week though, just because with his stitches, with the neutering, we didn't want them to come out. Um, after a week, he came back to playing, he was having a great time. We took him back to the doctor. She said that his healing is incredible. And because bulldogs have a hard time reaching their private areas and their backside, he couldn't mess up the stitches or anything, so his healing went really quickly. And we didn't even keep the lampshade on him because he couldn't reach it. Sorry, Dr. Daphner, if you're watching this. <laughs> um, but he didn't need the lampshade. Uh, his healing was incredible. So after a week, he kind of resumed playing normally, running around. Um, he was kind of, you know, his old self, but even better. It took a couple more weeks before he was fully recovered. Uh, it takes time, and he actually was still a little noisy at first, and during his recovery, even the first month, he got a little noisy again, and then went back, and he's a little noisy now too, but still nothing like before. It's unbelievable how loud he was before, and what a harder time he had breathing. So it was a really amazing experience, both for him and for us. We're very lucky that we found the vet that we did and that Tortellino had a very successful surgery and that he's doing great now. If you're having any doubts or considerations about the surgery, please leave me a question or comment below. I would be really happy to answer any questions that you have. If you're looking for a vet in Southern California who I went to, the description is down below where you can reach out to them. They're really great with bulldogs. Clearly, there are so many bulldogs who go there. They really understand this breed with all their genital, <laughs> genital. They really understand this breed with all their genetic problems that there are ways to deal with them and to help them live a better life. And I have no doubt that Tortellino is so much more comfortable now that he's had this surgery. I think it was the best thing we could have done for him. And it was money very well spent. Um, which, speaking of which, again, if you do need help paying for the surgery, Care Credit is an amazing service that lets you pay for surgeries, both for yourself and for your pet, uh, and pay them off with 0% interest over 6, 12, or 24 months. It's been an amazing service for us and allowed us to have Tortellino have the surgery and not be a huge financial burden on us. If you like this video, please leave a like. If you want to know more things about French Bulldogs, subscribe to this channel and ring the bell because I will be uploading more videos about French Bulldogs in the near future. 
I'm going to talk about the AKC health standard, about ways that you can make your French Bulldog healthier and better, and I'm going to have one on food pretty soon too. I've tried every food with this dog, and I have some very interesting observations. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.